Hey guys, so today is Friday, October 5th, and it's been a fun day. <laughs> um, I look a little bit haggard because I just got home from the hospital. So, this will be a fun story. <laughs> Shit. I, um, so... What was supposed to happen was the IVC filter gets put in my neck. So when they told me about it at the bariatric center, she said, it's just a filter that goes in your neck. No big deal. And I was like, okay. So last night I was starting to get a bit anxious about it. And, um, about 2 AM I woke up and I decided, you know, I'm going to look online and, and just prepare myself. So, come to find out, the entryway is in your neck, but the filter goes all the way down, right about your belly button area, below your heart. So, the wire to get that down there is silly, about that big, right? Um, so I did the oh shiz, um, so then I really didn't sleep and I had a dream that I went to the hospital and they told me I was too fat for this procedure and sent me home. So that was a messed up dream. Um, so my aunt picked me up and we went there and got checked in and she waited with me for a little while and then the plan was that she would go to work for a few hours and then pick me up when I was done. Um, so I had taken a clonopin, um, to help me with my anxiety because I was pretty anxious about it. So, and I'm not even kidding. They come in and tell me you're too heavy for this bed. What the hell? So they're going to have to now do this in the operating room instead of just the procedure room. And, oh, by the way, there isn't any openings in the operating room until about 2 o'clock. So, um, yeah. So my aunt left, and they put an IV in my hand. So the nurse puts in the IV. I didn't even feel it, actually, which was great. And, but she forgot the clamp on it or somehow the clamp wasn't there. So she's holding it, she reaches over to get something else, or she's talking or something, and I'm just sitting here like this, whatever, and she looks down and my blood had been pumping out of the back of the tube for 30 seconds at least. So there's a huge pile or puddle of blood on my sheet, as well as my hand was just covered in my own blood. It was just dripping down off my hand. Oh, and it was all over her glove and she she said oh shit you know and so she got it clamped and it was just the start of my day and uh, I told you this would be a funny story so then they never put in IV fluids or anything um, then they kind of disappeared. Everybody kind of disappeared. So I just turned out the lights. I mean, I didn't sleep very good the night before. So um, I just kind of snoozed and, you know, watched YouTube videos a little bit. But um, so they finally came in. The OR nurse came in and um, said, okay, we're going to do this in the OR. And I said, okay. And she said, and because we're doing it in the OR, we aren't going to do any sedation or anything. We're just going to do a local. And I said, let me get this straight because I was told I'd be twilighted um, or at least sedated uh, because by then my clonopin had pretty much worn off. Um, and she said, no, we're just going to numb the area. And I said, okay, um, well, I have a clonopin in my purse. May I take that beforehand? She goes, well, no, we don't want anything in your stomach. And I said, okay. So she left to go do something. So I grabbed that purse and I took one Klonopin and I started chomping it. I didn't even care because I didn't have any access to water. 
but uh, and I almost did it with two because I'm like okay I'm having this giant wire stuck down my neck with no sedation I'm a badass I guess like they gave me more credit than I thought I'd get I don't know whatever so they wheel me into the operating room and it's the operating room it's bright lights and sterile and everything else um, so they start you know the instruments like I said are this big they start unwrapping all this stuff so basically you have to put the initial tube down there then you feed the wire down there and then you take the wire out then you put the cath or the um, filter in and uh, just you know whatever so they had something called a pigtail that they were debating on if they want to use or not I don't know so I mean they were all very nice but I wouldn't wish this on anybody it was pretty damn intense so they start looking at my neck and you know when you lay flat I mean even like me look when I'm sitting here all my fat kind of goes up so when I'm laying flat all of my breast tissue and everything just kind of goes up here so the man you know there was probably six people in there he you know takes undoes my sleeve and pulls my shirt down so now I'm like laying there topless for everybody to see which I'm really not modest but um, so he starts pressing down on all my skin and he's like hmm yeah we're gonna tape it so I just start laughing and I'm like do what you have to do so he taped from my back shoulder down over my breasts a couple different spots to where all this skin was flat and uh, that was an experience and so then they lay this whole wrap over my face so I'm looking to the side but I was like I said you know pretty awake for all of this and I think the numbing needle must have been pretty long too because I could feel it like at least I don't know I could feel it um, so even though it was numb next was that tube and I could feel it like I swear I felt it like it was passing over my heart I don't know exactly how the arteries go but like my heart started like like skipping and acting weird when he would get close to it and so I'd I was just keeping breathing keeping breathing I was gripping the table and then they'd say how are you and at that point like I just started to kind of crying and, and shaking um, because it was just too it was so intense and so I said I think I'm gonna need a hand to hold and and so one of the guys um, held my hand and that helped and uh, I, I told them right away I said communication works for me so if you can let me know um, what you're doing you know that helps me and keeps me from guessing or thinking like worst case scenario um, so um, it, it felt the most pressure when they were putting the uh, filter down the tube because they really had to push it and then they had to use the x-ray machine to kind of make sure it was in the right place and uh, then they had to flush it with um, uh, contrast to make sure that the blood was flowing through it okay and uh, contrast stuff was weird because it was like they would flush it and it almost went like it, it's almost like it rose like I almost felt like I was breathing it out like it was hot and then it went whoosh down and then I could feel it like all over my body just hot it was really weird they did that twice and uh, so it was finally over and by then I was just done um, so they pulled everything out, but then, because it's a jug, it's the jugular vein, um, they had to press on it like hard pressure for about five minutes. So I'm sore, and honestly, I'm probably more sore from the the pressure um, of that. And you guys can see it's right here, and uh, it didn't it didn't stop bleeding right away so he had to press on it for a long time and um, 
let's see. Yeah, so they cleaned me up and um, took me back to the recovery room. And by then, I'd been there. I mean, I was there from seven, about seven o'clock until I left there at about 4.30 or 5. And uh, so I was ready to get the blank out of there. Um, so um, they took the IV out and, you know, they didn't even end up using it. They didn't give me any, um, any saline or whatever they do, any antibiotics, any of that. So, um, whatever, I guess it was good in case, but, um, yeah. So, I, I, I did the whole day without eating or drinking anything. So, um, after I got back, they did say, would you like a sandwich? You know, and I said, yes, please. Um, it was the best sandwich ever. Um, so when I swallow, when I yawn, when I sneeze, it hurts. feels like it hurts all the way back into here. Um, so I want to go to bed and just relax. Um, trying to think if there's any other funny stories. It was an experience. So I'm going to be calling the bariatric center on Monday because, um, I know there are other people that are larger that are going to be having this and the bariatric center needs to know that there's a weight limit on the table so that we can schedule it in the Sorry about that, my memory card was full, so I had to delete something. Anyway, so I'm going to call the bariatric center and let them know my experience and that they might need to explain things a little bit more or, or at some point someone should be explaining what that filter is because I was ill prepared and I'm usually always prepared for everything. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I had planned for my mom to come over and help me kind of go through the cupboards and clean up a little bit, but I might wait till Sunday because I'm not really feeling that great. Um, God, every time I swallow, it just hurts right here. Oh, well, it's just one step, one step closer. So, all right. I'm going to get some rest. So thank you guys for listening. I don't think that's going to be too bad of an area for the scar. I was thinking it'd be up here. So got, got in the jugular. <laughs> I can't even blame this on the sedation for being silly. Even the nurse that was checking me out was like, well, you'll be feeling something because of the sedation. And I said, I didn't get any. She was like, yes, you did. I was like, no, I didn't. No sedation. And I said, even in the uh, operating room at the last minute, I told the doctor, I was like, can you just sprinkle me with something? Because, goddamn, wow. And she looks at the chart and she's like, oh, I guess you didn't get sedated. Why was that? I said, you got me. Uh, why was that? I don't know. Like I said, at least I can laugh about it now. And I'm not talking smack about the hospital or the nurses or anything. Uh, it just, it was my luck today. So, as long as I'm sedated and out for my big surgery, I'll be golden. <laughs> all right, guys. I love you. Thank you all for the support and well wishes. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.